it. Hello, everyone. So my name is Sagan, and I'm working in the Gene Expression uh, Database BG. And so this is my first uh, talk in a conference, and I learned yesterday that I had to present instead of someone else. So, <laughs> so let's go. Uh, okay, so the aim of the project I'm going to talk about is to build a reference data set of single-cell RNA-seq uh, data for training machine learning algorithm in order to facilitate uh, cell type assignment. And in this talk, I will really focus on the uh, how to build the reference data set, not on the machine learning um, step, sorry. Uh, okay, so now with the current uh, single cell technologies, uh, one experiment uh, allowed to study thousands of cells. But usually, the cell types are unknown a priori. So the challenge is to correctly assign uh, the cell type to each cell. And usually, uh, it's done by first doing a cell clustering, uh, then, uh, sorry, <laughs> and uh, then to use uh, marker genes uh, in order to distinguish between the different clusters, and ideally to find uh, sp highly specific marker genes for each cluster. And then, experts in cell types need to um, manually check and verify and uh, assign the final um, cell type. But as you can imagine, it's a um, labor-intensive uh, process and it prone to errors. So it would be very nice to use machine learning algorithms to support the creation. And so it exists uh, many different algorithms and it's unclear uh, how to use them and especially how to use them in practice to help curators. And the first step to do that is to build a reference, a gold reference uh, set to train and to evaluate the algorithm. Uh, so we want in this uh, project to try to answer in, uh, in some uh, open questions. So for example, uh, we have questions uh, regarding the experiment context. So should we train the model in one experiment only or should we merge several experiments together and take the batch effect into account? Uh, also question about the tissue context. So once a model is trained on a specific tissue, can we apply it to another tissue or not? Then there is also the question about the confidence in prediction. So um, there are some uh, models that will try to assign a cell type in any cost, even if it's uncertain. And there are other algorithms that allow us to have uh, unknown, uh, unannotated un cells. And also, do we want to train the model to provide a confidence score to allow the curator to make the final call? Uh, there are also questions about the granularity. So should we use a hierarchical model or rather a non-hierarchical uh, model. And in this case, if we don't, uh, how do we uh, deal with the very rare cell types? So these are all the type of questions we want to answer in this project. Uh, so, but as I said, the first step to do that is first to really build a gold reference data set in order to train and to evaluate the model. So for that, we re-annotated and standardized uh, several uh, Drosophila experiments. We used the fly cell atlas and six other 10x chromium uh, experiments. For each cell, we capture uh, information about the tissue of origin, the developmental stage, the strain, the sex, and the genotypes. We also capture the cell types known a priori, if any, and of course, the manually assigned cell types. And for this point, it can be a bit tricky because as we want to reanalyze the data afterwards, we need to uh, link the barcodes to each cell types. And we realize that uh, this information can be very difficult to find. Sometimes they are not even provided. And so this, this can be uh, tricky. And then once we have this clean uh, data set, uh, we, uh, we reanalyze uh, all raw data with the same software, the same gene, uh, genome version, and the same QC. And while we were doing that, we faced uh, several challenges. And here I will go, uh, we'll give you some examples uh, about errors that we found in the fly cell atlas, but they did an amazing job, really, 
It just, uh, as we intensively uh, work on this data, we were able to find errors, but this is very common errors that we can find in every uh, other uh, data set of our experiments. So, uh, for example, uh, we found inconsistent terms, names, and IDs. Uh, for example, we found the male reproductive, the male reproductive system uh, was reported with two different IDs. So we had to correct for this kind of errors. We also found some inconsistencies between sex and cell types or tissue. For example, we found ovary cells in male and testes in females. Uh, FCA used uh, two types of uh, clustering uh, that they called uh, the name stringent and broad, and we found inconsistencies between these two uh, clustering methods. Uh, for example, an ovary cell in the stringent annotation uh, was uh, then a neuron cell in the broad annotation. Then uh, sometimes uh, there are tissue instead of cell types. So for example, we found the adult fat body or the adult uh, ingot in uh, the cell type annotation columns. Uh, we also faced some challenges, so not errors, errors but more challenges. Uh, there are some cell types uh, that are very difficult to, um, to determine, uh, so they are uncertain, especially for closely related uh, cells, uh, like for example for the neuron uh, T4A, T4B, T5A, T5B. Uh, and in this case what we do is we look for the, um, for the least common ancestor. And uh, there are also sometimes a missing term in ontology. Uh, so for example, in this, uh, for these two neurons, we looked for the least common ancestors, but there were no uh, closed terms. Uh, then in order to compare between the species uh, later, we also align all the terms uh, to Uberon, and uh, it can also be difficult. And when we look for the metadata in SRA, we also have the problem that the samples name are usually uh, very different from the sample name provided by the authors uh, in the paper, for example. So uh, in conclusion, we um, used uh, different experiments. We re-annotate each cell cluster, we reprocess the raw data, and we produce H5AD files for each of these um, uh, experiments, and we train and benchmark the ML algorithm on it. And um, this um, curated uh, experiment uh, produced by uh, BG are available to everyone. Uh, the, the one we have at the Fly Cell Atlas we also uh, curated uh, through this uh, QR code. And uh, then I just want to thank uh, the BG team. And it's a collaborative uh, project between three groups, the ASAP group based in EPFL in Lausanne, that are experts in uh, single cell uh, pipeline analysis, and the Robinson uh, group based in uh, Zurich uh, that are specialized in uh, statistical uh, biology. So, so thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. Um, so I had a question more about the the effects of the reannotation uh, of like correcting the errors and this kind of thing. So have you tried to train the model with the defectors like the noisy data and then do it with the gold standard just to see like the additive effects of your of your work? Yeah, that's an excellent uh, point, and uh, we we are not at that point yet, but I think. It, yeah, it's something we, yeah, it would be very interesting to do, indeed. So, are the errors in the metadata coming from the data repositories? It wasn't... Both. We, Both. Do we, you, we do take you, the metadata wherever they are. And do you feed that back, or do you have any feeling for why the problem's there? Is yeah. it not strongly typed in the submission forms or something? It, Can you, is the, are the submission forms not strongly typed for the specific data? 
No, exactly. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Right. So Val, yeah. I, I can give some background because I was involved in the annotation effort. <laughs> so so the so this was a big community annotation effort, a big sort of messy community annotation effort that involved great big jamborees partly self-organized during lockdown, where lots of scientists came. We provided the ability to do autocomplete um, on, with, with the ontologies. So that's why there is a reasonable set of, of annotations there in the first place with ontologies. But when you have a big community annotation effort, inevitably there's going to be some errors. And I think the interesting question to me is, what could we do in a community annotation effort like that to feed back errors rapidly? So. You know, if you could let somebody know instantly that you have, you know, an ovary, or you have a, you know, testis cells in a female, then they would immediately realize that they've made the mistake and correct for it. So I think being able to do that, finding ways to do that in real time, whether that's machine learning or whether we use the ontologies, I think. Sorry, it's ended up being more of a comment. I think there's not been as much, uh, yeah, it's not been as clear the history of this to, to most people consuming it. Um, but. Okay, we're going to move to a 10 minute break, a very short fire break, get some water, people sitting on the floor, get up, move. We're going to start again at quarter two.